Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, my name is John Osger, Outreach Coordinator of Fountain Magazine. I have here with me um, Zakira, author of the article on the Nizamia Mosque in issue 136. Uh, Zakira, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I would like to ask you a few questions about your article and the significance of the Nizamia Mosque. Uh, so for those that may not be aware, could you please tell us what the Nizamia Mosque is and why it is uh, unique? So um, the Nizamia Mosque is a masjid situated midway between our capital city, Pretoria, and Johannesburg in a, in a place called Madrand. And it's said to be the largest, um, or one of the largest masjids in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, for me personally, it represents so much more and um, it represents community and inclusivity, diversity. And I think this is largely due to the community center aspect, which is, which is unique to South Africa. We don't have um, many other masjids that offer the kind of facilities that um, the Nizamia Masjid does. So part of the Nizamia complex is, um, that, well, there's the masjid, there is a school and a boarding school, a clinic, um, as well as stores and exhibition halls. So yeah, so you talked in your article, you talked about all these different facilities, and it does seem a bit unique for a masjid to have a store and all these extra things. So, yes. And then you also talk about how these facilities, what they provide for the community. Could you just elaborate a little bit more about the role that the masjid plays in the community? Because this is an important point that you touch on at the end of the article. Yes. So... Um I, I, I believe that the role of the masjid in, in Islam generally, it's, it's invaluable. And like I mentioned in my article, if one is to gauge, if you must, the importance of the masjid in Islam, then one needs to look no further than Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's first um, action upon reaching Medina, which was then to build a masjid. And the lives of the Sahaba took... Um, well, big shape around this masjid. This masjid catered to all their needs. Um, it, it went beyond just physical worship. It, it catered to the, their social needs. Um, if we look at many of the narrations, we'll find that uh, it, it was a place of celebration. Mm. It was a place where wounded were treated at times, and that makes you think of the clinic um, here at Nizamia. It was a place where children were really welcome, where you read many accounts where the Prophet Wasallam's grandchildren played, even whilst he was performing Salah. And um, I, I think it's, it's important to, to realize what the masjid meant to them, that the entire lives centered around this masjid, all activities took place from this masjid. It was more it was it was more than just a place of prayer. So whilst obviously the Prophet's masjid was um, a place of prayer, a place of learning, it was also a place where they socialized. Um, uh, I think the role of the masjid is it goes beyond, you know, um, just communion communion between the creator and his creation is possibly the main role, the main objective, but if one is to go beyond this, and if one is to look at what the Prophet's masjid was, then we'll realize what it meant to community building. Um, in a place like South Africa, for example, we are a very diverse nation. We have Muslims from many different races, and whilst we we, we, we diverse, we are a very small minority. If we are then to center our lives around the masjid, I think that would be conducive to a lot, a lot more inclusivity, a lot more unity, community building, and so on. Um, the other aspect is women and children being allowed and feeling welcome in yes. a masjid. I yeah. think that, especially for children, I think it's so important because if you are to uh, ascertain that a child is now going to grow up and his heart is going to be attached to the masjid, then it would only make sense that from a very young age, the masjid needs to feel like home to him. Mm -hmm. But if it's an environment that uh, feels restrictive or very sterile, very silent, uh, very unnatural for the child, then I think you run the risk of the child feeling sort of, uh, or, or his heart not being attached from young. And, and when he grows up, is that really good place that he already feels like is a natural environment for him? Um, 
I think uh, children are, I mean, by nature, they're playful. And whatever, within, within the bounds of modesty for women, within the bounds of respect for children, I think no one should be excluded from the masjid. If you are going to exclude women and children, or if they're not going to feel welcome, that's a very large part of your community then that's not, doesn't have access to the masjid and all its activities. I see. That's, those are a lot of good points, and that's those are the big points that the article touches on. Essentially, that the masjid is more than a place for prayer, as you mentioned, um, because there really are not a whole lot of other places that uh, Muslims can gather regularly or have as a community center, perhaps. Okay. Um, and you visited the Nizamia Mosque yourself, right? You mentioned that you visit. Yes. Uh, would you like to touch upon your experience? What was it like to actually be there and experience it? Yes, so um, I visited on uh, Sunday afternoon and on that particular day there was a bazaar that was being hosted for families. And um, what struck me apart from obviously the how exquisite and how beautiful the masjid is in terms of construction and architecture was the atmosphere. Um, the atmosphere was amazing. It was so serene, so welcoming. Um, it really, really embraced one. And when I looked around me, I noticed um, there were many families. And I thought this was something that was particularly special. Sunday in South Africa is a day where families are generally together. It's not a work day for most, and it's a day where everyone relaxes. And I thought it was a very special thing to see families have chosen the masjid mm. as a place to uh, relax and spend time together. And if you look to them, I mean, um, it was a, it's a comforting environment for the entire family. Um, I saw, and, and when I looked around, I saw this diversity that we do have in South Africa, many different races, people just, it, it was after the Dohar Salah, and um, people just relaxing, doing different things. That particular day, there was some sort of entertainment for the children, and it was a very heartwarming thing to see um, children in, in a state of just, they, they were so carefree and in a state of absolute joy and just enjoying themselves. Um, but see, there was, there's not this feeling of restriction. No one felt unwelcome. Um, the atmosphere was such that it just embraced one fully into its heart. And I thought of this and I thought of the initial role that the first masjid played mm -hmm. and that it nourished the community. And like I mentioned in the article, that a masjid should be like a place, like a, like a heart that pumps blood into its communities. And I looked around and I realized, and I, and I thought to myself that in, in, in this sense, the Nizamia masjid has been such a gift to South Africa because it's what we need to revive that role. I see. So it seems like the Nizami mosque really is that kind of community hub, if you will, that you were saying that masjid should be like. Yes, definitely. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for writing for Fountain. And thank you uh, to our listeners for tuning in. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to our channel for more engaging interviews such as this one. Thank you very much, Sakura. Thank you. For